All right, our very first tip for creating more realistic uh, composites is going to be using smart objects. So anytime you have a project and you want to cut out a model and bring the model into your project, the first thing you want to do is rename your layer and you also want to right click it and change it to a smart object. Smart object is really important about maintaining the integrity of the pixels in that picture. So you can make the model smaller or larger. You can change your mind throughout your project and the pixels will always be a high resolution. If you're like me and you don't know how big you want your model to be and you change it 15 times an hour because you just don't know where the model is going to be at, uh, it's very important. Without a smart object, the pixels will be distorted, uh, they'll be uh, manipulated, and the resolution is going to go down the more times you do that. So change it to a smart object, and at the very end of your project, you'll know that your layer is high resolution. All right, for our next tip, that is going to be adding atmosphere to your picture. Now you see this finished picture right here, it's not bad, but what I want to do is create some atmosphere um, that's going to go in the background behind, make sure it's behind your um, models here. I'm going to get rid of all of my color grading and all of my lights, and then I'm going to go to the atmosphere layer, sample some of this color in the sky that's already there, and just paint with a soft round brush at a low flow just paint some fog here in the background. What that's going to do is it's going to make the, the background look further away and it's also going to make it less distracting. So just use the colors that are already in the sky and then just paint a layer of fog and atmospheric elements here in the background and then we'll bring our elements back up and our color grading and this is what before and after look. It really helps your foreground elements pop and make the background less distracting. All right, for our next tip, it's gonna be looking at the values of your model versus your background. Now, I've cut myself out, put myself in this background. I don't uh, blend very well because I'm very bright and the background's very dark. So I made a hue and saturation level, dragged all the saturation out so we have a black and white image. Now, I really wanna look at the, the whites of my jeans and the blacks of the grass, and I want to take do a levels adjustment and bring those whites down all the way to the point that the blacks are the same color as the grass. Then I'll just mask out the parts at the top where there's going to be more light from the sky hitting me. But anywhere where the feet and the, the, the pants hit the grass, you want the level of black to be about the same. So here's our before and our after, and that really helps uh, make it more realistic when the value of the darkest parts of your model matches the value of the darkest part of the landscape for a more realistic composite. All right, our next tip is about color grading. Now there are a million and one ways to do color grading. This is just one way to do it. But after I'm finished with my project, I like the editing, I'm ready to do a color grade. The first thing I do is a gradient map and then I choose a gradient that is very bright red to a very vibrant orange and I change that blend mode to hue. That gives a nice orange feel for the entire picture. But then I want to bring some of those blacks out and make them a little bit more blue. So I go to a selective color adjustment layer, bring some cyans in, take some yellows out. And then I'll do one more gradient map uh, that is going to be a dark blue to a medium sized blue. Change that blend mode to lighten and then bring that down just a little bit. And so all that did is just gives a nice orange feel to the picture. Uh, but it makes those uh, blacks have a little bit more of a blue tint and those complementary colors work out well and so this is one type of color grade you can use for your projects. Alright, for this next tip it's going to be creating some light leaks from a sun set that's in the background. If you have a model that's very close to the sun you can try this trick. Uh, go ahead and get rid of your color grading um, elements there make a new group called Sun Glare and just sample some of those orange colors right in there and just paint very soft uh, sections, change it to screen, make a new one with the same color but a little bit larger, change it to screen again, then make a new layer on top of that but let's do a lot more saturated this time, a nice orange color, do a small one right in here, change that blend mode to overlay and then do another one that's a lot larger like that, change it to overlay as well. And we can put our color grade back on and there is our sun glare, glare layer. It's bleeding right through the sunset onto the model and it's just one quick tip to make the model blend more into the background. 
All right, this next tip is about blending a model into a grassy field. So you can use a grass Photoshop brush or you can try this trick as well. Get a nice hard, uh, small brush. Make sure your pressure sensitivity is clicked off. Go to your brush shape dynamics and change it to 300 for a fade. And now what happens is every time you draw it, um, it fades out to a sharp point, just like a grass blade would. So I'm gonna zoom in, and all we're gonna do is just sample different colors down here, the light greens, uh, the dark greens, and we're just gonna paint some grass using that fade um, technique and make it look like she is actually standing in this grass. So just paint some grass blades of different colors that, met, that match the background. You also want to go into a layer mask and uh, get rid of some of her um, edges of her shoes. But after you do that, it will look very realistic that she is actually standing in this grass layer, and you did that in just a few seconds. All right, for this tip, we're gonna be adding a shadow under the main element in the foreground. In this case, it is a zebra. Now we've already put the, the grass uh, mask out of him. We're going to now pick a dark color that's already in the scene. So find a dark shadow in the scene, pick that darkest shadow color, and then just paint very carefully underneath the zebra and uh, what we're going to do is we want to match the same color, the same value as the other shadows in the picture. So I want to encourage you to spend a long time on the shadows as far as getting the shape right, but you do not want it to be too dark. You want it to be uh, matching the other shadows in the image. Don't change it to multiply or color burn or anything like that. Change it to darken and then bring it down just a little bit so you can see some detail. You also want to get a small brush and, and kind of clean up the edges of the shadow since it's in the grass. But the main thing I want you to take from this is make sure that your shadow value and darkness is same with the rest of the picture. All right, this next tip is about adding dust to the background of any of your images. Now making dust is really fun. Just get any Kleenex or tissue that you have in your house, rub it together really fast and take a picture of it. There will be dust particles flying everywhere. I put it right in front of a light, got a picture of it, and then you can just bring it right into your Photoshop project. I would um, change it to screen mode. Make sure you're underneath your color grade layers. Put it wherever you want to and then mask out uh, the parts that you don't want, these hard edges and then of course uh, the light. But just as easy as that, it is uh, very simple to add dust particles to your picture. It adds a lot of character and a lot of detail and uh, it really is uh, just something fun and easy to add to your picture uh, just to make it look a little bit neater and a little bit more interesting. So I hope you uh, enjoy this tip and go out and get your Kleenexes and just make a big old mess and bring them in to your projects. All right, this next tip is about adding sun rays coming out of a light source. In this case, it is a window. Make a new layer below your model layer. Change the blend mode to lighten, not screen. Make sure it's not screen. And all I'm doing is using a yellow color that is lighter than the book, uh, but it is not as light as the uh, window light. I'm using uh, the shift key to make some straight lines and I'm making some uh, large, rays and I'm making some skinny rays. It's good to have some variety with your sun rays. After you do that, change your opacity down to about 50% and do the exact same thing above the model layer as well. You want skinny lines, you want some thicker ones as well, and uh, just add some variety to the sun rays with the straight lines. Change your opacity down and we'll make a new layer above everything and change your blend mode to overlay to add a little bit of pop to these sun rays. All right, our last tip is going to be a color grading technique I use. And so for this picture right here, I'm going to start making it a little bit more blue. I'm going to go to a selective color adjustment and uh, make our blacks a little, little bit bluer uh, by pulling out some yellows and adding cyans. I'm going to do a gradient map with a blue and dark blue. Change that to overlay, but bring it down the opacity quite a bit. I'm going to do another selective color on top of that. Go to our neutrals, bring some blues in there. Then I'm going to do a curves adjustment where we start adding back our warm colors into the highlights. And then also pulling down some of the blues, um, which will make it a lot more orange-ish color. Finally, do a selective color on top, change your blacks to a little bit more blue. And there you go. We have a nice blue and orange color grade for this picture.